This video is for people who are writing music to a brief. It could be because you're working with filmmakers maybe for the first time or because you're taking an exam and you've been given a brief. I've worked with a lot of students over the years and one thing I've found is often they don't even meet the brief. Say they've been given a brief called The River's Journey. Then they get the sense of the river, but not the journey. That kind of problem. So this is to help you if a brief is making you feel stuck. The most common thing that I see with um, younger composers is that they give themselves too much choice. They don't rule enough things out and therefore struggle to make decisions. So if you find yourself in that situation, this video is for you. It's uh, gonna try and show you a seven stage plan for uh, avoiding that sort of paralysis that can happen when you're working within a brief. So what is a brief? It could be many things. It could be just a set of ideas. You see this a lot in films and TV and, and game sort of um, briefs. Something like, um, you know, be edgy, urban, contemporary, but not alienating. Be big and glossy, but not too corporate. Those kind of ideas. Or it could be something really, really specific. It could be write a rondo for two instruments. Really specific, but is that, how helpful is that? Is that like being on a cookery competition and someone saying, make me a meal which isn't soup? It could almost be anything. So a brief is just a set of limitations and a limitation is just simply a way of helping you focus, unlock your creativity and maybe get you thinking of ideas that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Um, I think it can be quite exciting to get a brief because that means that if those parameters are quite clear, then what I think is an important thing is that your own musical personality gets injected into that. Think of a song, uh, an album, like Medulla by Björk. That, um, that album is made entirely out of the sound of voices, no other instruments at all, and yet an incredibly creative album. What about the song form, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, that kind of thing? That's a really limiting idea, having such a strict structure. And yet people have written zillions of different sorts of really imaginative versions of those forms. Um, so, incredible limitations, incredible creativity. As an example, I'm going to take you through the process that I went through writing to a brief um, for a car commercial. So this is the film that I was given. Maggie, you see my balls anywhere? Hmm? Maggie, my balls? Oh, honey, I haven't seen those for a while. Have you looked upstairs? Try the attic! Dad lost his balls again. Unbelievable. Okay, so that was the film. In the way, the film is itself a brief. If you follow the sort of steps of the film, you probably won't go too far wrong. Um, but still the plan is true. I gave myself some, some ground rules to help focus my mind as I went through in these seven steps. So let's go through them. With a brief, um, how I might start changing it into music or translating it into music is once again reading through it and improvising <laughs> to it or listening to things that I think might fit the brief um, just to get inspiration if I'm really stuck. Read the brief, make sure you understand it. If you don't understand it, talk with someone who can help you understand it. Um, and at that moment, just be open to ideas coming to you. If you get inspiration, great. Write it down, sing it into your phone, it might be a beat, it might be a tune, it might be a vibe, whatever it is. Don't worry about details at this stage. Just throw those ideas out. Or even find an old idea that, might, that you might have lying around that you think, oh, that'd be useful for this. Great, get it down. So the brief that I was given for this commercial was 
make sure that when he gets in the car that it's really clear he's got a burst of energy and it can be in any style. So, mm, not very specific. It's one of those kind of briefs. Um, I can almost do anything with that. But nonetheless, I had an idea from um, just that, that brief and also from watching the film. Uh, I immediately had a thought, or I don't know why, Perhaps it's because I'm the same age as this guy, and when he was a kid, he would have played the recorder at school, like me, um, not very well. And I just had an idea, a tune, and I immediately sung it into my phone. I then went into the other room, got my recorder, and, and just bunged down a little demo of it. <laughs> Silly little tune, kind of pathetic, but sort of what I wanted. So I did a really quick recording, um, of myself playing the, the recorder and added some other instruments. Didn't spend too long on it, and it sounded like this. It's all stupid, really. Maggie, you see my balls anywhere? What happens if you don't have loads of ideas um, at that early stage? Main thing is, don't panic, just move on to step two. Every brief has millions of ways of being interpreted. You may find that you need a specific angle that can help focus your mind. This is uh, what I call writing a brief within a brief, where even if you've been given a general set of instructions, you find things particularly that focus your mind that you're interested in exploring. Yeah, I think with, when it comes to briefs, yeah, you can sort of ring fence it and make your own kind of rules. Uh, maybe it's, I'm only going to use these types of instruments or this palette of tone colors or this kind of rhythmic thing. Yeah, it just really depends on your style and what, what you're trying to achieve. And then saying, okay, I know my style, I know my voice, how can I, how can I best achieve what I think they're trying to get? Could be you think, Hmm, yes, I want it to be nostalgic. I find that interesting, thinking about the past. Great, that could be it. It could be, yeah, I want to do something, a piece which is about conflict, it's about different forces against each other. Great, that's a really good idea. You could make music out of that. Or what about, it's a journey. It's got, I really want to do a, a piece which is, feels like it's a journey from one sound to another. Um, all of those things could be a really good guide to you at an early stage to start giving, finding a shape emerging for your ideas. I wrote a piece for the Open University for their um, moon night. So the brief the scientists gave me, um, I did feel uh, it was quite daunting, I think, because there was loads of information. And so um, I had to kind of step back from that. Um, and I just took the kind of essential bits, the sort of what he was trying to get through. And um, yeah, actually creating that piece was quite fun. Um, but if someone says it can be in any kind of time signature, it doesn't matter whatever, I mean, if it's, I, I, it's still possible and it's still gonna be creative and stuff, but I really respond well to it's this mood. So what you'll often find is that once you've found this specific thing that you're interested in exploring that feels sort of interesting to you, um, that a musical idea follows quite, quite quickly afterwards. So with the nostalgia one, you think, yeah, I know what I could do. I could, um, I could use old sort of gramophone record sounds and old jazz tunes and find a way of remaking them and reformulating them. That would be a really interesting thing to explore. Or with the conflict one, maybe you think, OK, I'm just going to have two completely different musical sort of feels. I'm going to have a sort of tinkly piano, and I'm going to have a really aggressive synth thing, and I'm going to make them face off against each other, and one of them wins, for example. Or the journey one. Maybe I'm going to go from um, a really... I'm going to use morphing of sounds to take a sound from being, like, let's say, a really sort of serene, beautiful texture into something really dark and menacing. So the whole thing is one big journey. And suddenly you're starting to get, or gradually, you're starting to get musical ideas coming. They're not just words on the page. They're actually sounds that you can experiment with and play with. For me, by messing around with the recorder, it started to make me feel what I was interested in. I was interested in this sort of old stuff. Sounded a bit old at the beginning. 
and sounded a bit low energy, maybe a bit jokey and a bit silly. Definitely goes with the film, but it was where I was interested. I thought, yeah, that's good. Well, maybe if I've got old at the beginning, how about if I go new? That would make sense of the, the brief. It would be like new and energetic. That's good. Be low energy at the beginning, high energy at the end. I'm starting to create much more detail in my brief. One idea that I, I had was thinking, OK, old stuff. What would he have been listening to when he was a kid? Maybe for maybe some 70s classic rock. How about a sort of Pink Floydy sound? And so, again, I didn't work it up just yet, but I had this idea in my head, which, again, I just sung the idea in. I think I probably played my guitar into my phone. And it sounded a bit like this. Like it. It's not quite as funny as the other example, maybe, so I wasn't 100% sure. For a while. Another idea I had okay, if at the end, maybe I'm going to be moving towards electronic music, that seems kind of contemporary and, and new. What if I did some really weedy old electronics with almost like synths that sound like they're almost not, not um, very expensive and not very good and maybe aren't working properly? And so I, um, I threw some ideas down. Um, here's one. Yeah. So I wasn't sure about that idea. You might often find this at this stage of the process. Um, but you're beginning to hone the ideas of what, where you're headed. So it's okay to have ideas which you don't really, you know, spend too much time on. Just throw them out. It's fine. It was worth a try. The point of finding an angle, even if it feels a bit random, is that it probably contains a structure that's going to be useful to you musically. Maybe you got to this stage and you're thinking about the brief, but you still haven't had any musical ideas. Just don't worry about that yet. It's fine to be at this stage and still not have got much down. Let's say you've got been given a brief called The River's Journey. And the, the only um, ideas you've had really are a sort of watery idea of sorts of... But you don't know what to do with that idea. Um, so that that's not a problem. Let's say your, um, your specific angle is pollution. I'm going to I'm going to talk about sort of dirty water, clean water. Well, that is not just an idea that has a sort of structure implied in it in a way. Ask yourself, literally, what is a river? What does it do? And suddenly you start finding by just interrogating the brief a bit more. Yeah, actually, it could be a journey. River pollution, I could go from um, a countryside river clean and pure and twinkly down to this dirty city river. Um, or I could go from small to big, um, or both of those. I could do a, I could do a three-stage journey from up in the mountain to the river, the kind of dirty city, and then the majestic sea. That's a three-part structure. That's a handy structure. Three parts is often good for music. I kind I, I like to try and storyboard it a little bit, try and try and work out what the impact point is, what the kind of punchline is. Okay, with my example, I had, I could see that my, the structure of the film and of my brief within a brief that I was going to do from sort of old to new um, had a sort of journey structure, a bit like the river's journey in a way. It's not a verse, chorus, verse, chorus structure. I wasn't going to come back and repeat ideas that I'd already done. I was going to develop ideas and make them grow. Um, so that's good. It still left me with some choices. I could go from sort of cool to uncool, from sort of pathetic to strong. There's lots of tonal changes, but all of those choices would involve the same four steps of the film. The first stage is slow, sort of low energy. All this stuff, let's, let's, uh, let's scroll around the film, where he's strolling around looking miserable and low energy and everyone's taking pity on him. The second stage um, is the bit where he starts to panic because he can't find what he's looking for and he's running around looking a bit anxious. The third stage is there where he spots the car and we're going to have another build. So that's stage three until he gets into the car, runs down, then when the door slams, 
boom, we're in the final stages. So I've got a really clear load of sections now. I'm not just writing a mood, I'm really carving it up into these four stages. And once again, what you often find is when you just start playing in your imagination with how you could reorder things, an idea comes. And I immediately had an idea. Once I kind of got a sense of that build for that build up to the ending, I thought, well, what if I do? I had this idea of maybe I do some sort of EDM kind of ending. I'd make my experiment with that. I thought, well, that's a build. And of course, EDM, that one of the classic things that they do is they have those risers that sound like this which is a classic build. I could really build tension there. And then when he gets in the car, I could go boom. I thought, I'm definitely going to try and experiment with that. Write it down, sing it into your phone, or find a sound on your computer that works. Step four, commit to your structure. You might have got to this stage, and you're flying. You've got lo loads of ideas, but you know the ones that you're going to work with. You're going to just cruise through writing your amazing piece. On the other hand, if you're struggling, you don't know what to do with your ideas, you still haven't come up with many good ideas that you like, don't worry. I would just say, commit to your structure, really test it, see whether it works, and use it to help you be creative. So one thing that's really important is, especially if you're struggling to, to, get, to get your piece together, is to not have too many sections. If you're doing a song structure, you know, you only need three or four different sections, and some, some of them will be repeated, like your verse might be re repeated several times. You don't need 15 sections. It's just going to get more confusing and, again, give you too much choice of too many ideas. You want to start limiting things down. Because it's about creating a momentum. And sometimes with simple material, you can, you can always layer things on top. You can always make complexity, but if you can get your your um, raw, simple material to work for you, you're just, you're laughing. Once you've got that simple structure, it's something easy for you to get your head around, and you can begin to do something which I really recommend, which is to sort of hum or sing into your phone or busk on an instrument through the whole thing. It's a little river up in the mountains. I want it to get bigger. Rhythmic change. And then it's going to hit a waterfall. Then it reaches the outside of the city. And so I'm basically singing the whole structure through, following my really simple structure of the, the river in the hills, the river in the city, the river in the sea. I can then refer to that recording later on. I've always got it, sing the whole thing through. It can be a really useful exercise. Write something even if it's bad. Can that really be a good idea? I've found that it's really good to just write down everything you think about, even if it's terrible. Don't wait for inspiration. Um, you have to be working. Picasso said this brilliant thing, inspiration happens, but it has to catch you working. So nothing is going to happen unless you are already in gear, I think. There's no such thing as a bad idea. You know, it either works or it doesn't. And actually, sometimes that idea that doesn't work was necessary to be aired in order for the next idea that does work to, to succeed. So sometimes those bad ideas will be exactly what you need, but you know that your structure is always there, sort of keeping you on track. Giving yourself achievable tasks is like paramount. I think it's really, really important because otherwise, otherwise I think you're just in a state of panic the entire time, which I've been in. Um, and so have learned that achievable tasks um, are, are really valuable in terms of just moving the process on day by day, just calmly. Give yourself an achievable task, not something like write something brilliant. Something like work on section two, make sure that it feels like it's building towards section three. Look at the first three seconds of the track. Does it come in with the kind of impact that you want? Um, the ending, is it really dark enough? My ending is as dark as I, was, I, I said it was going to be. Here's another idea if you're still struggling. Um, to, to decide on what um, material you want to use. Don't be worried about making up more than one idea for each section. 
So for my piece, I was really chucking them out. I mean, I was enjoying it, I have to say. I was having fun. So I just threw out ideas. I didn't spend much time on them. You'll hear that they're not very built up. Um, this one's just guitar and harmonica for a bluesy sort of old bluesy sort of style thing. But this idea is working to exactly the same structure as all my other ideas. I'm not giving myself too much choice, just trying to hone down to the thing I like the best. Yeah, not bad. And then I made that, I tried different endings. So that one, can't remember what I did for that. Yep, that's actually an old idea from a show that I did. A different sort of bluesy harmonica to go with the beginning. I tried this one, whatever this is. Oh yeah, kind of 80s sort of vibe. I'll fast forward through. Maggie, you see my balls anywhere? Nah, didn't seem to work. It worked on paper, but I didn't really like it. Tried various kind of clubby tracks at the end. Yeah, maybe. It didn't spend too long on that. I tried a sort of rocky one. How did this start? Oh, yeah. Totally sort of cheesy 70s kind of music. Again, just staying completely with my structure. And then the end was totally sort of... <laughs> trying out loads of these different sounds, but they're all following the same structure, so I feel relaxed about it. Number six, assess your work. Listen to it either in your head, um, you know, just in your mind's ear, or literally listen to the recordings that you've made. And ask yourself, does it meet the brief? Is it doing what I said it was going to do? And if not, you've got two choices. You either have to change your brief within a brief a little bit so that it still fits with the brief that you've been given, but it's still got a satisfying and nice shape which goes with the material that you've written. Or you have to change what you've written. You've got to ask yourself difficult questions about the material that you've been working on. So let's say you've done a piece which is sort of called The War and you know that your section three is going to be the bloodbath. It's the dirtiest, darkest, most horrible section. And you ask yourself, have I really made it horrible enough? Is it more horrible than section two? Is it more warlike? Um, so maybe you need to push it further. Or maybe you've done a section which is all about sort of falling away. You were really said, yeah, I want this thing to just gradually, gradually disappear almost into nothing. Ask yourself, have I gone from high enough? And have I gone low enough? Um, in my dynamics. Maybe I could push it more. I'm always striving to be clearer. So one example with, uh, with one of the um, ideas that I was messing about with in this commercial, I found myself in section three, so, sorry, section two, the bit with the, in my brief and then a brief, I was saying, no, at this moment where you see him with this sort of anxious face here, um, I'm going to start building up the tension, so instead of it being lazy and kind of comic, it's just going to, well, still a bit comic, but it's going to sort of build a bit more, and so you see him getting breathless and a little bit sort of panicky. Um, and when I listened to this idea back, I thought, hang on a bit, it's not really growing at all. No, 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 this is, definitely isn't meeting the brief. It's not doing what I said. I'm either going to have to rewrite it or junk it, and as it turned out, I junked it. Don't be afraid to rewrite sections again, it's fine. Um, don't be afraid to return to old versions of sections, also fine. But if you find yourself dithering between those two things and can't quite decide, then you need to focus your mind on the brief, make a decision. Get feedback. Um, play your track to, or if you've still got different options, a couple of tracks to someone you know, someone you're working with, and uh, see what they say. If you ask them to, to re-describe what they've heard back to you, not in specifics, just to give you a sense of uh, how they're hearing what you're doing and see whether that chimes with, with the, your ambitions for your piece, what they say they're hearing. Um, so they might give you feedback. You don't have to take it all in. You interpret it. You take the things that feel like they're constructive, even if they might be a bit brutal, that's OK. Um, and there'll be certain bits of feedback that you'll know. No, I don't need that. I'm, I'm pretty certain about this thing. I'm going to ignore that certain part of the feedback. That's also good. So I banged out tons of sketches with the same structure. And listen to all my versions. I had nine different versions of this track. Um, and I play, there they all are. And I pretty much narrowed it down. 
Uh, some of them because they weren't meeting the brief. In fact, most of them weren't meeting the brief in some way. The rocky ones were, didn't feel new enough at the end. Some of the other ones didn't develop in the right way in the middle section and didn't feel like they were growing in the way that I wanted them to. So I had two versions. This is version number one, which I had. So it started really, really empty. And I was just going to do a great big dynamic shape using sort of old school hip hop things like, you know, turntables and all that sort of stuff. Maggie, my balls. Oh, honey, I haven't seen those for a while. Have you looked upstairs? Try the attic. Dad lost his balls again. Unbelievable. When you see that shot, then I bring in the note of tension, start to build it up. Seize the car. Tension. Second build. Found them. OK, so that was, that was the first one I liked. And the second one I liked was this one. Which was really interesting. The very first idea that I had, the recorder idea, remember that? Ended up being my favourite. Um, and this is the journey that this went on, section one. Maggie, you see my balls anywhere? Hmm? Maggie. My balls. Oh, honey, I haven't seen those for a while. Have you looked upstairs? Try the attic. Dad lost his balls again. Darker sound for there, where he's starting to panic. Punctuation here. That riser that I talked about. And when I, at the time when I was writing this, which was a couple of years ago, this sort of dubstep sound was quite, felt quite new. Over. The Zukunft gehört ein. I have my two ideas. I still have one more stage to go about deciding which one of these two things to go to. I played it to the director, um, who I knew, and um, he said, oh, I really like the beginning of, the, of that one that we've just heard, the recorder one, but the ending of the second one. Is there any way you could put them together? And I thought, I hadn't thought of this. So an example of where other people's feedback can sometimes help you. I thought, well, yeah, why not? Let's see if they, if they work together. Um, I tried it, I liked it. Um, which was enabled me at this stage um, to move on to the final step. You can waste an awful lot of time doing this too early before you've sorted out the shape of your piece, polishing. This is a part, personally, I enjoy this, this part of the process. But it's particularly enjoyable if you've followed this kind of step process with, when you are working to a brief. You won't always be working to a brief. But where your, your brief that you've been given, the brief that you've given yourself, and the music that you've written are all doing the same thing. They're all working to the same ends. Suddenly, you've got this ability to go into massive amounts of detail. You could just spend an hour working on one bar, but you're not getting lost. Um, you, you can still see the wood for the trees because you know that your structure is, is sound. You know that the overall architecture that you've made for the piece is going to work. Um, and so you can move from listening to the whole thing to listening to a tiny, tiny little section really, really comfortably until you feel like it's finished, which may be quick or it, may be, may, it might take you hours, days, weeks, months even, depending on how long your project is. So if you're given a brief, don't think to yourself, oh, that's going to be so constraining, it's going to stop me being creative. It's more likely to be the opposite, that that constraint is going to actually bring out your creativity.